let's talk about Botox and a brow lift and if you're a candidate for the procedure. I want you to understand why we treat certain areas to give a lift. First area is between the brows and it's formed by two muscles. There is procerus and there is um, corrugators on either side. And these muscles, they bring the brows, medial or central brows, down. The next area that needs to be addressed is the round muscle, orbicularis oculi. And this muscle also brings the brow down, especially when we smile. The third muscle, and it's the major brow elevator, is the frontalis. And that's the muscle that typically helps to keep the brows up. So all these three areas need to be treated to give the most lift. But for some people, you have to kind of balance it and give up some of the lift in exchange for improvement of the lines and i'll explain why some people who have very hooded eyes or have a lot of extra skin they really engage their frontalis to help elevate the brows and help to keep that extra skin uh, hanging over the eyes so you need to test how much you're engaging the frontalis and if you will get a droop instead of a lift. So put your hand down, kind of close your eyes and have you uh, yourself relax that muscle uh, with just a little bit of gentle pressure and then open your eyes. If you're a person who gets a lot of kind of hanging extra skin, you might get that overhang after the Botox treatment, especially if the forehead is treated aggressively. To minimize that overhang and the drooping of the brows, the forehead is typically treated more conservatively, but then the results will not last as long as here and here because uh, the length of the result is dose dependent. But no matter, especially in my case, how conservatively I treat this, now approaching my 40s, at some point I would have to consider blepharoplasty.